welcome. In this lecture, we're going to go through two examples of using the Leopoldage rule to compare the growth rates of two functions. Uh, so the first one we'll do will be the natural log of x compared with e minus pi x, which note is actually a polynomial. Sometimes you might look at it and not be sure, but that's part of why I wrote it, was to uh, give you a little practice with realizing that that kind of thing is a polynomial. Pi and e are still constants. Uh, and then in the other example, we're going to compare e to the x with x squared. So let's just get started. And the first step, right, of using Leo Patel's rule is to check that you have an indeterminate form so you can. And we're going to be computing, right, so in order to compare the growth of these two functions, we want to compute the limit as x goes to infinity of, and then we just compare the ratio of them, so we have the natural log of x, and then we're going to divide that by, and we have uh, e minus pi x, right? Uh, and then if you take the limit of the top one, right, so if I was to take the limit of the top, I would get infinity, and if I was to take the limit of the bottom, I would get minus infinity, and so what that indicates to me is I do have an indeterminate form, so this is an indeterminate form. I can apply Leopoldage rule, so I can apply, and then remember we abbreviate Leopoldage rule with LH. Okay, perfect. So onward, um, this is going to equal, so using Leopoldage rule, and it's nice to indicate with LH that you use Leopoldage rule, and then we have to remember we have to keep the limit every time. You should write the limit until you've actually taken the limit. Uh, just to, so that you don't make a mistake. And then, right, we're still taking it as x goes to infinity. And now the thing that we have to remember is to very carefully remember that we're going to take the derivatives of the top and the bottom separately. So no quotient rule. I'm just going to take the derivative of the top, and then I'm going to take the derivative of the bottom. Uh, so the derivative of the top, so I'm taking the derivative of the natural log of x. If I'm taking the derivative of the bottom, I'm taking the derivative of e minus pi x, okay? Uh, and then you can go, you can just keep on going with this. So this is equal to, right? And then we have the limit as x goes to infinity, and we can just take those derivatives. So the derivative on the top, uh, that's gonna be one over x. And then on the bottom, if I take the derivative of the bottom, uh, well, I just pick out the uh, coefficient uh, of x because this is a constant, so this goes to zero, and then I just pick out the coefficient of x. So this should just be uh, minus pi. Okay, um, and so this is going to equal, well, what does this equal? The x kind of falls down to the bottom, right? So let's, again, not forget to write our limit here. So this is equal to the limit as x goes to infinity, right? And because we have 1 over x on top, that x ends up in the bottom. And so this entire thing becomes, well, actually, maybe that'll be, to, to so that it's clear where that came from, I can actually just keep that color scheme there. So you can kind of see that that x came from the 1 over x on top. It dropped down to the bottom. Uh, and this limit we know is actually equal to 0, right? So now we're good. We're done. We don't have any indeterminate forms. We have 0. Uh, we're done. We know that. And then we look back up, right? I have to look all the way back up. And I have to see what I was taking the limit of. So we have that the limit as... I was a little worried that might be a little tricky to see. So we have the limit as x goes to infinity. Okay. <laughs> Trying to put in a little bit of carefulness. So the limit as x goes to infinity of, and then I have uh, the natural log of x divided by e minus pi x, right? Because I, I looked back, and that's what I was initially computing, but with all of these equalities, that actually ended up giving me that this was zero. Right? And then, so this is kind of... But what does that tell us? Because what we're really interested in is the comparing the growth 
Okay, so that's just that. Um, but then we know that that tells us that, so this is true, and, right, if it's zero, that tells me that the bottom grows faster than the top, so I get that um, g of x equals e minus pi x uh, grows faster than, so this grows faster Right, then, this is still always good to check that everything's on the board. I have to do all these things. I want you, for you to be able to see everything I'm writing. So, you know, I always try to check a lot. Uh, so I have f of x equals the natural log of x. Okay, so that's the, uh, the what, actually in reality we were, oops, I was supposed to be green. I don't know how that ended up orange. Then, got carried away. Or I was focusing on explaining to you that I'm always checking uh, what can and can't be seen to try to make sure that you can see everything you need to see. And then I lost track of the colors, so this is the natural log of x. Right, so we know that, right, because this one is on top, this one's on bottom, and the, uh, the limit is zero, which tells me that the bottom dominates. Okay, so that's good. Now let's try another one. Uh, this one's a little bit different. Uh, you're gonna see why. So let's go ahead and get started with it. So I'm gonna take the limit. Again, I wanna compare the, the growth rate of these two. So I wanna take the limit and of the quotient. So I wanna take the limit as x goes to infinity of, so I want e to the x over x squared. Okay, um, and if I took those limits of the top and the bottom, I would get, so the limit as x goes to infinity of e to the x is actually equal to uh, infinity. And then the limit on the bottom, if I took the limit as x goes to infinity of x squared, I again get infinity. So I'm a very happy camper because I have an indeterminate form and can use Leopold's rule. So indeterminate form. Right, which tells me that I can use Leopold's rule. So can use Leopold's rule. Right, I check that. Always need to check that. So let's keep going. Um, so this is equal to the limit as x goes to infinity of, and then I, you know, I'm very careful about this. So always remember, yeah, you write it out careful not to skip any steps so that I don't do something silly. So I actually write out each time I'm taking the derivative of the top separately from the derivative of the bottom. No silly mistakes will take over my work. Okay. And then I can just compute these uh, derivatives. So I'm taking the limit as x goes to infinity of, and the derivative of the top is just e to the x. The derivative of the bottom is 2x. Great. Uh, and then looking at this, if I took the limit of the top, I would get infinity. If I took the limit of the bottom, I would get infinity, right? Because I don't know what to do with this limit. This isn't obvious because the top and the bottom are both infinity. So I do indeed get infinity over infinity again just taking the limit of the top and then taking the limit of the bottom. Okay, so again, I have the in, in, indeterminate form and can use Leopold's rule. So indeterminate form again, which tells me that I can use Leopold's rule again. So that's good news. And I will go ahead and do that. So then this is going to equal. So I guess this was a Leopold's rule. And then we have another Leopold's rule here. Um, so I have to, again, take the derivative of the top and bottom separately. But this time of this, so I have the limit as x goes to infinity of the derivative of the top separate from the derivative of the bottom. So the derivative of the top separate from the derivative of the bottom. Okay. 
right? Uh, and so this is going to equal the limit as x goes to infinity of, uh, and so the top, so this is e to the x. On the bottom, this is 2. Okay, so what happens, so now, if I take the derivative, uh, sorry, if I take the limit of the top, I get infinity. If I take the limit of the bottom, I get 2. So infinity definitely dominates over 2. Okay, so this is equal to infinity. Right? So this tells me that it took, it took doing Leo Patel's rule twice, but this told me that. So now I go all the way back to the very start, that this is the limit I was taking, that I was taking the limit as x goes to infinity of, and then I was taking it of e to the x divided by x squared. Right? So I was taking that limit, and in the very end, I got infinity. Right? Which is going to tell me that right? What does that tell me? That tells me that, and thus we have. What do we have? We have that uh, f of x equals too many pens in my hand. Uh, so I have f of x equals e to the x uh, grows faster. Right, then what was on the bottom? So then g of x equals x squared. Okay, my limit of the ratio is infinite, and so top grows faster than the bottom. Uh, and the takeaway of this particular example is that, um, so takeaway from this uh, particular example, it, uh, of example two. Okay, um, so what is my takeaway? It's that as long as we keep an indeterminate form, we keep getting an indeterminate form. So as long as we keep getting an indeterminate form, keep getting an indeterminate form, does fit. Check that out. Okay, uh, so as long as we keep getting an indeterminate form, we can keep applying Leopoldo's rule until like we actually know what the limit is. So can keep applying Leopoldo's rule. And then you could think about that and you could probably guess what would happen if I had a degree five polynomial, right? Because looking at this, right, looking at what we did here, you know, every time we did Leopoldo's rule, so every time we took the derivative, right, the degree went down, right, the degree went down by one every time we did Leopoldo's rule and took that derivative. And so what that would actually give me is that, um, I'm trying to make this a little bit darker. Uh, so that would actually give me uh, that, and e to the x just stayed the same. So I could have done that with actually any polynomial. I just would have had to apply Leopoldo's rule a whole bunch of times. Uh, and so here's kind of like the key, really cool, important remark. Um, so remark, is that these examples aren't coincidences. I chose them carefully, so these examples aren't coincidences. They actually tell me something, and what they're going to tell me is that logarithmic growth growth is less than polynomial growth which then in turn right and actually let's look at this for a second because like why was this example general because if I had 1 over x 
and I had any polynomial here, the x, you know, now all of a sudden I have, like, in this step, I would have had one on the top, and I still would have had a polynomial on the bottom, actually one of even bigger degree, okay? So this still would have ended up zero no matter what the polynomial was on the bottom, right? And we could have had a similar thing here, like I was saying, that e to the x, no matter how many times you take the derivative, it doesn't change, so you keep on getting infinity on top. And with a polynomial, every time you take the derivative, your degree goes down by one. Eventually, you end up with it going down to a constant, which then means that you're infinite. Okay? So, this one also works, and we always have that polynomial growth is less than exponential growth. And actually, this is very significant. The extent to which they grow differently is very significant, and this is something that we'll kind of look at examples of. Okay? So, I hope this made some sense, and I will see you in the next, next lecture.